Assalamu alaikum my dear students. Hope you are doing very well when I guess for my dear Allah. This is Khala Dr. Resident Teacher of Social Science, National Day in Indian Version School, Deshi. So my dear students, today I am going to take a Bangladesh and Global Studies class for class 9. And today we are doing reading done from chapter 2. And uh, this is your fourth class. So dear students, without any further ado, let's start the class. Now look at the board. Today we are doing the discussion from page number 27. And the discussion is about the roles of the political leaders in achieving independence. Actually, we all know about that uh, there are lots of political leaders who are included in the, um, who has actually contribution in the achieving independence and now we will try to know the names of that people who are actually mostly important in the uh, history of achieving independence and they are actually, they are actually in our mind and they, are, they will always remain in our mind and, they, and whenever we will remember about that persons actually it will be with respect. So first of all, we will try to discuss about Bangabundu Sheikh Mujibur Rahman, the father of uh, the father of the independent Bangladesh and the architect of independence in our country. So now we will try to discuss shortly about uh, about their activities because if we try to discuss about all of the things about these persons, actually the it will take a lots of time. So we all know the important things and we will try to make a gist discussion about the about these people. So first of all, we will go through the contribution of Sheikh Mujibur Rahman when it has been started from 1948 actually, which is actually remarkable uh, uh, incident or event and then what happened with this person and what was his contribution we will try to discuss. The, so the first uh, activities of Bangabundu Sheikh Mujibur Rahman was he established the Chhatra League in 1948. So with some uh, people or some students who are actually very much uh, very much curious and very much eager to make a uh, make a uh, country which is fearless which is independent and where where they can do anything they want actually all, all of the things will be legal so they they as they are not getting all of the facilities so they are very much curious and eager to make this happen so that's why and Bangu the Sheikh Mujib Rahman grabbed the facility and then he established the Chhatra League in 1948 and then in 1949 he actually established the Aomi League that means they, they are only there was not only the students there was only there was the actually most important people who are actually thinker about Bangladesh who are actually devoted for the independence of Bangladesh and who are the most important leaders and who actually did a lot for the country and that type of people actually with that type of people Bangabandhu Sheikh Mujib Rahman make the Aomi League in 1949. And then he played a vital role in the language movement in 1948 and 1952. If we go through the book very properly, we will know what are the actually um, uh, important incidents and um, the memories we will find out. And then Bangladesh Sheikh Mujibur Rahman was, uh, has a contribution in Jokta Front election in 1948 and then six point demands in 1966. We all know about that and then mass uprising in 1969. We all know when it was uh, it was the time of mass uprising. In that time, uh, Bangabandhu Sheikh Mujibur Rahman was actually uh, a case has been uh, filed uh, against Bangabandhu Sheikh Mujibur Rahman, and the name name of that uh, case was uh, Bangabandhu versus State. That type of heading was uh, that included, and there were 35 people who were uh, under the case. So it was in the period of mass uprising in 1969, and then. We, we can see Bangabandhu Sheikh Mujib Rahman in the 24 years of the Pakistan regime, regime he spent 12 years. How cruel for a, for a person to spend 12 years in a jail or in a prison of out of 24 years. That means out of 24 years he spent almost 12 years in prison. How devoted, how how careful for a country a person can happen can be that a person after after spending a, a lifetime a, a spending about a decade sorry about 12 years he he is actually struggling and he has been struggling and then he finally got the independence and then he gave the clarion call for freedom in his history 7 march 1971 speech in sequence of struggle so when it was in 1971 the pakistani people were very much curious uh, sorry very much uh, very much um, what to say uh, they did a lot of things beyond us and uh, it was very much pathetic for the people of bangladesh and this is actually a dark 
history of Bangladesh and that time Bangladesh Sheikh Mujibur called for the actually uh, gave the clarion call for the freedom of the history uh, uh, independence in actually in 7th March 1971 that is actually a memorable event for Bangladesh and then he formally declared the independence of Bangladesh in the early hour of 26 March 1971 when the Pakistani people started atrocities and started actually which was called Operation Search Light. In that period when he got to know, he actually uh, then uh, he hurriedly actually called for the uh, final independence which is uh, called for the independence in early hour of 26 March in 1971 and then the people started fighting for the independence of our country and then after 9 years, sorry 9 months, Bangladesh got the independence. So my dear students, this was all about the just uh, discussion about the contribution of Bangladesh Sheikh Mujibur Rahman. Now we will go to uh, the rest of the leaders who are actually four uh, important leaders who are called actually national leaders of our country. The first one is Sayyid Nuzul Islam. He was the actually uh, president. Uh, uh, he, he was the acting president when Bangladesh Sheikh Mujibur Rahman sometimes when he was absent. Uh, for, uh, absent in the in the country that time he he actually maintained the acting presidency of uh, the country uh, of our country that means the Mujibur government and he was the most important organizer and contributor for the independence of Bangladesh and then uh, next one is Tajuddin Ahmed we all know about him he was the president of Mujibur government and Mujibur government was actually. Um, uh, organized or established in 10th April 1971 and 11 at 11 April uh, 1971 Tajuddin Ahmed declared about the formation of Mujinagar government and he, he was a actually most important associate of uh, Bangladesh Sheikh Mujibur Rahman and they has a close relationship and uh, this person is very much importantly connected with the history of our country, our independence. And then Captain M. Monsur Ali. He was the finance ministry, he was responsible for the finance ministry of the Mujibnagar government and that time he, he actually uh, maintained the finance about food, clothes and armed uh, forces actually. He, he actually provided all of the things and at the same time he is the most important leaders of four national leaders of Bangladesh and he is actually very much a good organizer and actually very much important organizer for the um, national uh, independence or independence of a national country of Bangladesh. And then A.H.M. Kamar Zaman, he was the ministry, he was the under ministry of uh, relief for rehabilitation. Uh, that time he actually, uh, lots, lots of people are in India who are actually residing that country and uh, they are actually as refugees, they are residing that country because they are under shelter of India. So that time they need actually food and some accessories which, which is very much mandatory. So that time H.M. Uh, Kamar Zaman actually did that, that thing which is very much important for the survival of the people of Bangladesh. That time he collected reliefs and foods and tried to send this in India so that the people who are uh, residing there as refugees they can get the facilities and they can survive. So dear students this was all about the rules of political leaders in achieving independence. Now we will go to the next uh, topic which is the role of foreign countries during the liberation war. So here the role of foreign countries during the liberation war. The first one is the role of India. We all know India is a friend country, neighboring country of Bangladesh but in the time of um, independence of Bangladesh when Pakistan and Bangladesh was in a struggle and it was a nine month long struggle. That time what was their contribution? Actually some of you or most of you know about that but we are trying to discuss. India was actually showed the best friendship in that period. They gave us shelter, they gave us food, they gave, they gave, gave us military troops and they gave uh, actually uh, what type of need we are in they actually tried to fulfill. They are actually associate of us and they uh, they sent us military troops and that time with Mitra Bahini and that military troops we made Jyotu Force and then with the help of or with the contribution of Jyotu Force we actually finally we uh, got independence in 1971 in the 16th December. So in every sphere if you find the role of India was actually 
um, tremendous and we are very much grateful to India about their contribution. And now the Soviet Union and the socialist countries. Actually socialist countries were, uh, were a blessing for, for Bangladesh in that time. That time um, when Pakistani, when the people of Pakistan, that means the leader in the Yahya Khan was uh, doing these atrocities, bloody, bloody things and um, all of the booty activities. That time Soviet the president uh, sometime um, two or three times actually called Yahya Khan and uh, requested him or said him to stop these activities but they denied and the Soviet Union actually tried to support in all of the ways they can and they spread the news all over the world so that all of the world can see the atrocities and they can stand by Bangladesh. And now the role of Great Britain. Great Britain actually, they are actually our media friend actually we can say. They did the role of mass media. They spread the news on that time BBC. Uh, BBC every time regularly they telecasted the news of uh, news and brutality of Bangladesh who, who, which actually the people of Bangladesh are facing that time and they they try to get awareness and they try to spread the news and then by which the people all of the world can uh, get acquainted with the news and they can support Bangladesh so these things actually done by Great Britain and that time a person George Harrison and from a person from India uh, Ravi Shankar both they uh, arranged a concert and which was called Concert for Bangladesh and that time they arranged the some arranged the concert so that they can get money and with that money they can help the people of Bangladesh. So this was actually that was actually very much memorable. And now the role of United Nation. Actually that time we all know about that. The role of United Nation actually uh, when United Nation creates that was actually pitch keeping a this is the organization, this is an organization about which, uh, which gives the pitch, which maintains the pitch. We, if this, uh, this organization see any um, uh, unhealthy situation, unhealthy, unhealthy environment or something different which is not positive, that time they can contribute or they can take a, uh, they can give a, hand to, give, give a hand as a help. But that time, United Nations did not do anything because they, it was not possible for United Nations without the help of five permanent countries of that organization. If someone, uh, as all of the country has a veto power, if someone shows, shows its veto power, that time United Nations cannot take a decision. So that time United, whenever United Nations try to make a decision for uh, helping, uh, the, helping or solving the problem in our Bangladesh and Pakistan, that time actually some of the country which is actually mostly uh, known as USA, uh, they actually denied and they uh, showed their veto power. That's why they, it was not possible for United Nations to help Bangladesh that time. And now we will go to the next topic, Bangabundu in the reconstruction of Bangladesh. So Bangabundu in the reconstruction of Bangladesh. Actually after a uh, war or after the independence of a country, the situation of a country is actually devastating. So what was the situation? That time actually all of the things were actually, uh, what to say, uh, destructive, all of the things were destructive where people are homeless, foodless, clothless, no facility less, medical facility less, education less. So all of the things need to be, man, uh, need to be mended up and that initiative or that responsibility was actually taken by Bangabundu after the liberation war. So what did he do? So at first we will uh, have a look. First one he did, the reconstruction process of a war torn country. So at first he tried to find out where actually, what type of help is needed or what type of things should be done. So at first he uh, made a group and then he tried to find out what was the problem and what type of things we actually need. And then drafting a new constitution and its enforcement. It was in 1972. See, so 1972, whenever we are trying to uh, fix, uh, fix a is the problem or we, na we need to make a good country or make a uh, make the country uh, run a proper way so that time we need a uh, actually rules and regulations so that rules and regulations is actually constitution so that time uh, our uh, government uh, from our government that means the our um, that leader Bangladesh Akhaji Rahman a taken an initiative to make a constitution and as as early as possible it can um, they tried to enforce the 
rules and regulations for the society. That means what type of things a country's people can do or what type of things a country's people cannot do. These things actually enlisted in the constitution on what type of help a person can get or uh, should be given. So all of the things are actually drafting in a new constitution. So it was done in 1972. And then it was done, uh, the Gona Purishad. Gona Purishad means actually now uh, there is a parliament, so that time there was no parliament, so uh, the Gona Purishad was something like that. All of the representative of any of the country, the person who wanted to make a change in the society, that all of the people were enlisted and then they made a Gona Purishad so that they can um, help their country or help their locality by themselves. So this was actually organized and then nationalization of abandoned industries so in that period there was lots of industries jute industries sugar industries cloth industries so all of the industries whatever there was so as it was abandoned because some people flee from bangladesh some people died some people um, uh, went to india and never come back so all of the things were actually abandoned so the country nationalized all of the abandoned industries that means all of the industries has become the government industries and then nationalization of the primary education so before that the primary education was not uh, uh, national that was actually private privately done and then after the liberation the primary education was uh, uh, was actually nationalized and then uh, it was made it was made mandatory that all of the people who are actually uh, from age 6 to 10 they are mandatory uh, they are bound to do the primary education that means they are bound to complete the primary so now the relief and rationing system so in a country after the independence when there was the people who are foodless homeless and uh, shelterless that time they need in that uh, they, they are in in the need of facilities like that so the government of that time that means the leader of Bangu, leader of country bangladesh and bongo uh, take the initiative to f give them shelter food and uh, food and all the necessary things and that was actually in the under the system of relief and rationing system and then the general election of 1973 so for the first time in history for the independent country of bangladesh uh, a general election was held in 1973 it was 7th march 1973 and now new financial policy for five years so for uh, running a country in a proper way uh, all of the things which need to be included in a system which is uh, called financial policy so it is actually about uh, 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 it was actually five years long so new financial policy for five years it was uh, invested or it was actually established in uh, 1973 and then Bang Bangladesh in the international community so what type of uh, contribution of uh, Bangladesh what type of contribution of international community which was given to the Bangladesh so that will be mentioned here so now dear students you will find out this information the first one is commonwealth in 1972 bangladesh got the membership of commonwealth in 1972 and then united nation it was actually 17 april 1972 in 17 april 1974 united nation uh, has given the membership of bangladesh and that time for the first time bangladesh shaykh mujibur rahman declared uh, or uh, described the national policy of bangladesh in bengali language and that in the history in that time uh, when it was his, in general assembly of united nation bangladesh got the membership of nam and yc nam means non aligned movement and then yc organization for islamic cooperation so dear students you have to memorize all of the information which is given here that is very much important you can get mcq questions from this part so my dear students hope you have understood today's topic in the next class we are coming we are uh, going to come with a new topic till then stay safe assalamu alaikum